Look at Lani's perspective. 4.22 p.m. Mokupua, local time. Look, Kiki, I shout, holding the most amazing shell ever over my head. She smiles. I see it, Lani. Very lovely. What's it from? She thinks and says, I don't know. Looks of sorts like an earth conch, but, well, it won't be that. You might be the first person to discover one. Why don't you give it a name? I look at the big pretty shell, trying to think of a name. I think it should be the big pretty. She laughs. Very descriptive. I definitely couldn't have given it a better name. Maybe I can talk to my professor about getting you into uni early. You make the best marine biologist. I frown and stick out my tongue. Uni is for grown-ups. She smiles. You don't want to come to the capital with me? I'm sure no one would mind having you in the class. I think about that. Or... Or... She grins. You could come back to Mokapur and we could go to nursery together. She shakes her head. I'm too big for nursery, Lanny. I miss you too when I'm away, but they wouldn't let me sit in a class full of five-year-olds. I puff out my bottom lip and bring my brow down. Don't pout, Lani. Still pouting, I say, I'll make them let you in. Oh, yeah? How are you going to do that? I think for a moment, then answer, I'll go in. I'll walk to Mrs. Kahananui, and I'll say, Hey, my sister's coming to class with me. She grins. Uh-huh. And when she says, no, she isn't, what then? I'll beat her up. She laughs a lot, and I feel silly. You know what Mummy and Daddy would say, don't you? I roll my eyes. No hitting. We solve our problems with words, but Mummy and Daddy aren't here. You don't get to be naughty just because I'm the one looking after you. I may be cool, but you better believe I tell Mum and Dad if you try to beat up your nursery teacher. You're not cool, I say, and stick out my tongue. She sticks her tongue out back, and I try not to laugh. I laugh. Then her hollow makes a sound I've never heard before. She looks like she doesn't know it either. She takes it out and looks at the screen. Then her face goes pale. She looks at me and says, Lanny, we need to go back to town right now. What? That's not fair. We just got here. I want to play more. We have the whole beach to ourselves. Then it took ages to walk here. This isn't a discussion, Lanny. We're going. But look at Lanny. Now is not the time, she shouts. I burst into tears. I don't want to, but she's shouting and I don't understand why. I can't help it. My eyes are closed, but I hear her walk to me and feel her put her hand on my shoulder. I look up and see her face looks sad. I'm sorry, Lani. I didn't mean to shout. This is really important. I need you to be a good girl right now, all right? I, I can't explain, but this is important. Can you trust me that this is important enough that we need to go right now? <laughs> can, can I take the big pretty, please? She shows her teeth and wobbles her head before saying, Sure, fine, I'll carry it. Climb on my back. I'll give you a piggyback home. A piggyback? All the way home? I say excited, forgetting my sadness over having to leave. Yeah, we need to go quickly and you'll slip. It'll be quicker. Not even caring that she was about to call me slow, I climbed onto her back. She puts her hollow away and picks up the big pretty. Then we leave the beach. She's not running, but she's moving quickly. Over her shoulder... I can see the path back to town with thick trees on both sides. She's going very fast. Definitely faster than we came. Kiala's Perspective I look up through the trees and try to distract both of us from the situation. Uono Ukarani is going to be bright tonight. I'll never get used to living on a gas giant's moon. So weird. I think it's weird that Earth has no gas giant. It has its own moon, she answers. I suppose you wouldn't remember it. You were a baby when we moved. I smile joylessly. I'd guess we only have a little more than an hour before Wakia sets and it gets dark. Under normal circumstances, I'd just light up my hollow to get us back. But that's going to be tricky with the piggyback and use a shell in one hand. I really shouldn't have bought the shell. I just didn't want to have to argue about it when she already thought I was taking her home for no reason. If it slows me down by even 0.1%, it could make the difference between making the evacuation and not. Then again, there might not be an evacuation. We might get back to town and then just have to wait to die. She'll at least have her shell. My mind tortures me by showing me her lifeless body floating in the sea. 
still implausibly clutching that stupid pretty shell. I pick up the pace, careful not to trip over any of the Neonesian palm roots growing through the path. Should I have explained to her what was going on? I don't know. I just didn't want her to spend what might be the last few hours of her life terrified. Maybe I'll hate myself for keeping it from her. Maybe she'll hate me. Why am I hoping for that? I suppose if she hates me and I hate myself, it would mean we're both alive. By all the Akua, I hope we survive this. Kiki? Kiki? Kiki! I hear Lani say, and realise that I'd entirely zoned out. What is it, Lani? Someone's calling you, she says, at the same time as I hear my ringtone. Oh, uh, hold on tight, I need my hand, I say, awkwardly pressing the wrist of my shell holding hand onto hers, clasping my clavicle to anchor them there, and with my right, retrieving my hollow and answering the call. Kiala, we just heard, where are you? I hear my mum's panicked voice say, It's alright, mum, we're on our way back to town, I've got Lani, we should make it. But there's no way to evac- She says, suddenly distraught. It'll be all right, Mum. I interrupt. Both lying and forcing calm into my voice. They'll work something out. Is Dad there? Clearly trying to hold back sobs, she says, y Yes, sweetie. He's here. Could you put it on speaker? Of course, you're on speaker. Mum, Dad, I just want to say thank you for everything. And to let you two know that Lani and I love- Ah! An indescribable pain shoots from my leg. And I briefly registered that I've caught it in the crook between two roots, immediately followed by realising that I've lost my balance. I'm pitching forward, and there's nothing I can do about it. The last thing I see is a rock, rushing at my forehead. Lokalani's perspective. Kiki falls down and I roll over her head. I'm a little hurt, but when I look at her, I see she's not moving. Kiki? I say, frightened. I get up and go to her. She doesn't move. Kiki, get up, I say, pushing her shoulder. Kiki, we need to go home. You said, I say, tears coming. Kiala, get up, please, I yell, really trying to lift her. She's too heavy. I'm too small. I can't. I try to think about what to do. Kiki, I'm going to go back to the beach, you know, the one I'm not supposed to be at right now, unless you get up and stop me, I say, pretending to walk back the way we came. She doesn't move. Kiki, if you get up, I'll give you the Big Pretty. You can have it. You can call it whatever you want. Big Pretty was a dumb name anyway. She still doesn't move. Please, Kiki, I don't know what to do. I say, crying. What should I do? What should I do? Help! I scream towards town, knowing it's too far for anyone to hear. Help! I scream back the way we came, knowing there's no one behind us. Help! I scream for someone, anyone. But nobody comes. Okay, think, 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 think. You're not strong enough to move her. You can't shout loud enough to be heard, and there's no one to tell. Her hollow, where is it? I search for it a few moments. If I can find it, I can tell it to call Mummy and Daddy back and tell them what's happened. They can tell me what to do. I look a long time. I don't find it. Kiki, I'm going to go... I'm going to find someone who can help. I'll definitely come back, no matter what. I leave the big pretty where she dropped it. I shouldn't have asked her to bring it. She might not have fallen if she wasn't carrying it. And me. I run. I run faster than I ever had before. I just have to find someone. I just have to find anyone who can help. I keep running. Eventually I can't run anymore. I breathe hard. Everything hurts. I decide to walk for a bit. I'll run again when I can. It's getting dark. Ho 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 cool Kaklani is bright, just like Kiki said, but Wakia has set. I'm just beginning to wonder how far it is to town, when I see a monster. She's a woman. I can tell that much. Everything else about her is wrong. Her hair is bright white, like photos of really old people from old times. Her eyes glow white too. She has too too many arms and not enough fingers on each of them. Her skin is blue. Her face is wrong. The wrong shape. She's weirdly slim. Above all, she's tall. Too tall. Her head is nearly as tall as the trees. She has to be a kapoor. Is there a kapoor of night? Twilight? She smiles at me, showing the wrongness of her teeth. She has four long, sharp ones. She's going to eat me. I start crying and, instead of eating me, she stops smiling. Victor! Dimanji! Efan Steplu! Komando Hikau! Peseliod! She shouts. The twilight kapoor 
is soon joined by a fire kapua. He's less wrong. He looks almost human. The only thing wrong with the fire kapua are his height. Almost as tall as the twilight kapua. Pale skin, green eyes, and fiery red hair. He must be a servant of the twilight one. He'll use his fire to cook me, and then they'll both eat me. The fire one bends down and says, Hey, sweetie. We're here to help. Don't worry. I don't understand you, but please don't eat me. I beg, terrified. Ah, uh, she's too young for a translator. Makes sense, I suppose, says the fire one. I back away, but find something behind me that wasn't there a minute ago. I look behind me and see the most terrifying Kapoor yet. He looks most like a human. The only things that give him away are his pale skin and scratches on the most angry face I've ever seen. And I guess the fact that he got behind me without making any noise. I scream. The twilight one says, Dear Manja, we have a red honor. Zimik, says the Kapoor of silence. It must have sound nothing like either of the other two's. Oh, says the Kapoor of fire. We should probably get Tuya to translate for us. She might know if anyone else has this path. He pulls out a hollow. That's a strange thing for a Kapoor to have. A Kapoor with a hollow would be funny. If I weren't so certain I was about to be eaten. He taps at it and says, Toria, we found Ahuba. She doesn't have a translator. Could you tell us what she's saying? Of course, Victor, comes a voice from the hollow, and the firehead man turns his hollow around to me. Hello, sweetie. My name's Twilla. Can you understand me? Says the voice. Y yes, I manage, terrified. Ah, uh, are they going to eat me? Eat you? She laughs. No, sweetie, they're not going to eat you. They're here to help. They just need you to help them first. Can you answer some questions for us? I can try. What's your name, sweetie? Lo- Lokilani. Good. One question down, she says kindly. Next question. Do you understand what's going on? No, I answer. That's okay, sweetie. Do you know if there's anyone else on this path? Yes, my sister. She's hurt. She wasn't moving. I was going for help. There's a moment of silence. Guys, she says her sister is on this path. Hurt and not moving. How far? Anyone else? Answers the fire kapua instantly. He's asking how far away she is. Do you know? Ah, uh, a long way. I've been running. I don't know exactly. Is there anyone else? No, no one. We came from a beach on the other side of the island. There was no one there. We didn't pass anyone. It's just us. She says her sister's the only one, and she thinks it's quite far. She relays. The fire kapoor thinks. I'm beginning to think that he might be the leader, not Twilight. She is very small. What she thinks is quite far might not actually be very far, but there's not much time to invest an army, he says thoughtfully. I don't need to understand him to see he's making a decision. Please, I beg, save my sister. It seems he can understand me without the woman on his hollow telling him what I've asked. He nods. Okay, kid. Let's go get her. Later. The fire kapoor carries me in his arms and flies down the path. I've never moved so fast. Are you holding up, Toon? He asked the violet kapoor. What's all? Talk as of you. I want to here. She answers. Tamanja, you good? He addresses the kapoor of silence. Tiger! He answers. There! Shouts the fire kapoor as we see Kiki lying on the path. Like I said, not far. 1200 meters. Just unlike like the long walk down to Shields Mall. When we slow down, he drops me on my feet and pulls out his hollow. Twilla, medical scan, now please. She's got a concussion. Akashos. How like Ross come too? Answers Twilla. Seven more half? Your decision. It on the tsunami is 21 minutes. No time. Timanja, take the kid. I'll take the sister. Without a word, the Kapura of silence picks me up and I shriek in surprise. Sorry, kid, no time, says the fire Kapura, lifting Kiki like she was made of paper. We need to run. Toon, try to stay ahead of us. You can't fall behind. What way? Then the free Kapura run back to town, carrying me and Kiki. 
I see the big pretty still lying on the path where she dropped it where she fell. As we get out of the trees, I see an enormous building that wasn't there when we set off earlier. How do they build such a huge building so quickly? It's taller than all the other buildings in town and shaped like a bird. They're running towards the new bird building. Why is there absolutely no one outside? The Twilight Kapoor starts slowing down and the fire one shuts it up. Toon, push for it! No time! Keep going! Twiller speaks from his hollow. Guys, you need to get back now. The Zanza times are here already. The tsunami is about to hit. We're nearly there, Twiller. Get ready! We come onto the sports field by the beach. I run towards a long glass staircase. Only with no stairs, they're stuck in the sand and leading into the bird building. Then I see something I don't understand. The sea is coming towards us. Only it's not where it's supposed to be. It's eating houses. I scream. Take off, Twiller! Shouts the fire one. The bird building starts making noise and moving. Moving up. The Twilight Kapoor and Silence Kapoor carrying me get to the glass staircase with no stairs. Ah, uh, guys? We turn back and see through the glass that the fire Kapoor is hanging from the edge with one hand. His other still holding Kiki. His feet are really far from the ground. Silence puts me down. No time for you, says the Twilight One. No, no time. Just time for Garo and fall me up. We're still rising, further and further up, as Silence and Twilight run back to try and pull up fire. I look to the sea in the wrong place, eating houses, and see it's really close. I shriek as it rushes underneath us. Fucking her! Shouts fire, as his feet are pulled by the angry water. The other two are trying to take Kiki from fire, but don't seem to be able to, when a woman appears, who must be Fire's sister, even if she's a lot shorter than him, and her face is less human. Up here! Zim! Shouts Fire's sister, before the other two get out of her way and she leans over the side of the glass, grabs his wrist and pulls both Kiki and Fire up to safety. Thanks, Fran. Pants Fire. Could you take Hatu Gameriku? Attention, please. The brother Fire says to his sister. She picks up Kiki, even more easily than her brother did, and walks up the glass. Twilight runs to fire and puts her hands on his shoulders. Who wants this hearty, Victor? Pull first the bag hands on both sango mer a girl pal icky, she says, about to cry. Yeah, I did. But I made it, didn't I? My feet just got be wet, is all. I'm okay. For yourself. Twilight starts crying, then kisses fire. Oh! The Kapura of Fire and Twilight are married? I guess that makes sense. I don't really understand anything that's happened since me and Kiki left the beach, but I understand that they saved us. I walk up to them and they turn to me. I hesitate for a moment, still having to convince myself that I'm not going to be eaten. I hug Fire's knees. Thank you. Thank you. I shout, trying not to cry. He looks down at me and smiles. I'm guessing we're saying thank you. You're welcome, kid. Who 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 called Anna Cat? <laughs> Fucking hell! Come on! Zule, <laughs> said the Kapoor. <laughs> what the fuck does that say? <laughs> <laughs>